Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack, the muscle and mobility maker with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to fix that limited hip internal rotation that you have. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it doesn't get better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive in this one. All right, like I said, today we're gonna to be showing you how to fix that hip internal rotation that you're missing. Now, in case you're not aware, hip internal rotation is a pretty important function of our body overall, especially when your leg is in extension. Our hip internal rotation becomes very important for the stability of our leg overall which can then affect how your knee is functioning, your foot's functioning down below, and how your low back is going to feel things. So if you're missing hip internal rotation, this could be something that's causing you to actually experience knee pains, back pains, and other issues up and downstream from that hip. So we do wanna make sure that you have a good amount of hip internal rotation and that you're able to control it very well. So today we're gonna to be showing you how to test and look at your hip internal rotation first of all and compare sides. And then we're also going to give you exercises that you can use to actually improve that and approach it. So let's go ahead and start to look at how you can test your hip internal rotation right at home in a very simple way. All right, so in order to test, you wanna set your phone camera angle up just like this so we get a good bottom view here. What you're doing is setting your feet at yoga mats width apart, and I wanna make sure that my feet are planted like a tripod, so I feel all three points of contact from my first, fifth, and those two metatarsals and my heel contacting the floor on each foot. From there, I just wanna let my knees fall in toward one another, and I'm testing to see if there's any difference in the angle of the legs here when we're putting the hip in internal rotation. Now, if that's comfortable when you're right at the edges of the mat, you can also take it a little bit further out if you need some more space here for those legs to drop in. From here, we're gonna let them fall in once again, still keeping those three points of contact. And we're looking for, again, any differences in the heights of the legs. So you might see that one leg wants to fall in a little bit further than the other. That leg has better internal rotation. So we're just kind of comparing the angles here. Once we have a good understanding of where those hips stand, we can go ahead and start addressing them. So here I'm gonna start with some banded distractions to help set the hip in a good position in the socket. This lunge stance is very important because of that internally rotated position. So you see me favoring the small toes of my back leg and really intentionally internally rotating that back hip. I'm engaging the glutes and then I'm doing some lunges at the same time to make sure that I'm setting that joint stable. From there, we can bring it down low, anchoring down low on the post. I'm gonna put that band up at the hip crease, hug my knee to my chest. I have one hand assisting me to pull me into an internally rotated position as I plant the foot. And then I'm gonna drive up, getting some engagement from the glutes once again into a hip thrust here from a single side. You see I have my other leg just kind of pushing off the post to help me keep tension on that band as I'm working and I'm working that through internal rotation with some activation of the glutes, which becomes very powerful in maintaining that position over time and restoring natural function of the joint in that way. Still with the band at the same position on the hip, we're gonna to come to this half kneeling position. Once again, I want those three points of contact from my feet the whole time here. But what I'm doing is actually kind of prying myself into that internally rotated position with my hand that's on the knee. So I'm forcing it internally rotated, then I'm taking it out into external rotation and just playing between those two positions here. In each of these, I'll probably spend about two minutes total time, but you can also count reps. So about 15 reps, 10 to 15 reps, somewhere in there is gonna start to help you make an impact and a change on what you're experiencing. Now this last one's a little different with the band. Here I'm with a lighter band, I have it above the knee. We're using it in a method called contract relax, okay? So I'm actually contracting against that band, my external rotators, 
and then I'm going to relax and allow my leg to come into that internally rotated position. I'll put the other leg on top of it to help add a little bit of weight, but then I take it back out. Again, every time I contract, this allows me to get the opportunity when those muscles relax to take some more range of motion. So we wanna take advantage of that relaxed position, add the load on it and allow it to passively go deeper into this internally rotated position. Now, one thing we wanna be aware of here is that our pelvis is not rotating. So keep your pelvis anchored to the floor, make sure that your hips are not rotating to the point where they're turning your pelvis over. And again, you, this one we can actually let the foot come up off the floor if we can get that range. Uh, but we do wanna make sure that the pelvis is staying neutral and holding that anchor against the floor and allowing the hip to do the rotation. Next, we're gonna to start to build some internal rotation strength. Here I'm using a yoga block as a spacer for my knees. So I wanna use it, the length here to make sure that it's keeping my knees about hips width apart. And then I'm pivoting off that yoga block. Essentially, I'm reaching my smallest toes for the outside of my shin as I internally rotate that hip each time. So you'll see my ankles even change their angle so that it helps with that internal rotation. We wanna work the whole system here. My knees are at 90 degrees, my hips are at 90 degrees. And I'm just working reps, trying to maximize the engagement that I feel each time I internally rotate up at the hip. Next, we can just lower those feet to the ground. I do take the block to a little bit narrower of a position between the knees. And now I'm performing glute bridges with the legs intentionally internally rotated. So I am squeezing that block between the thighs there as I internally rotate the hips and bridge up at the same time. So it can help once again to activate those glutes as we work through this range of motion while the hips are internally rotated to help stabilize the pelvis and teach our body how to stabilize with that engagement. And lastly, one of the best positions we can work from is a 90-90 position. Here, I'm showing you how to do an internal rotation lift off in a passive manner to start. So you can use a stick, a dowel here, put it over that thigh, use that as your lever, and we're gonna put it, the foot to hook it over the top and then lift it up in passive range of motion. Now this might be hard at first, it might feel kind of sticky, Take your time, get used to that. As you get more comfortable with it, you can actually play with trying to maintain the height as you let the dowel go back down, seeing if you can actually keep the leg up at the height that it was achieved with passive range of motion there. Another option is holding a ball or a weight and rotating over that back leg. Here I add a little bit of a lean forward to get those muscles to engage once again, and then rotate back over the hip here and focus on twisting in as far as I can with a little bit of an exhale each time that I rotate to allow that to help pull me into further rotation. Take your time. Again, these can feel kind of grimy, kind of sticky at first, but as you work them more, they will become more comfortable and the movement will become a lot smoother overall. And lastly, 90-90 liftoffs with no assistance. Here, we're just focusing on that engagement up at the hip. You're gonna get a big engagement at that TFL muscle that's right by your pocket. You'll notice I have my fingers interlaced with my toes, hand on the knee. This is to help me keep from leaning away from that leg. I wanna make sure that I stay as upright as I possibly can. You'll feel your obliques working on that side. You'll feel that hip working to lift the leg and do the best as you can to lift and maintain reaching the small toe for the shin. All right, and there you have it. How to go about testing your hip internal rotation and actually improving it after you figure out where you're missing it. And if you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below. 
and take a moment to share this one with a friend. Maybe they're working on their hip mobility in general, or maybe they're experiencing some issues with pains of the knee, lower back, hip itself, or even shifting of their squat or deadlift, anything along those lines that they're experiencing, share it their way. This is something that could be impacting that. If you are somebody who is currently struggling with a training ache or injury that's keeping you from training at the intensity that you wish to, and even just interrupting your daily life and routine, what I want you to do right now is drop down below in the description to fill out a coaching application and schedule a mobility blueprint call. This is our opportunity to get on a Zoom call together so that I can first of all take you through a bit of an assessment, gather the information I would need to tailor a program specific to your needs, and then lay out the full details of what that program would look like for you and answer any questions that you have. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead, head down there in the description, fill out that coaching application, get that call scheduled, and we will start working on resolving that pain in the next 12 week period for you. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future con like, content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it does not get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. We'll see you next week.